Hello, welcome to another episode of the Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial series. In this episode, we will transition between different kits and organic level design. For this next section, we'll work the cave kit into the Nordic dungeon. The cave kit functions essentially like the Nordic ruins kit. It's composed of a series of sub kits that obey snapping rules, but the caves allow for more organic freedom as seen throughout Skyrim. The versatility of this kit allows a designer to create just about any kind of chamber imaginable. However, working this way is a little different than the way we built the Nordic portion of this dungeon. There are multiple cave kit variations available, ice, mine, and caves. We'll be using the green cave kit. When searching in your object window, you can start all searches with the prefix cave G asterisk, which will prevent ice and mine variations from appearing. We're going to replace the final room of Lokir's tomb with a cave chamber. Delete the area pictured here so that it looks more like this. We're going to replace the deleted room with a simple shell chamber. When working with caves, it's often best to start with a very basic shape, then build inwards to create a natural looking space. Our shell will be a large 4x4 room. The pieces that we'll be using are pictured here, which you can use as a visual aid. Arrange the loose pieces together as pictured here. You need one type of wall piece per side to get the pieces to fit together correctly without seams. It might be easier if you start with the middle, then add the walls, making sure they match correctly as you go. This will be the starting point for our final room. We'll be deleting a few pieces so that the player can get in and out of the room, but for right now we're only worried about roughing in the general shape in which we'll define the room. When working with multiple kits, you'll need to create transitions from one kit to the next. Some pieces exist specifically for this purpose, but if there isn't a piece available for what you had in mind, don't worry. You can easily make your own transitions, which have the advantage of being visually unique. Begin this transition by extending the large Nordic hall by another piece. You can select the existing piece, press Ctrl D, and then move the copy to the end of that hall. And then to create the hall transition, you'll need the following cave G pieces. Assemble these pieces as shown here. Once the transition area is created, turn Snap to Grid off. Select all three pieces and move them in line with the large Nordic hall. Adjust the positioning until it looks good to you. It's a good idea to visually spot check this in game before continuing, keeping an eye out for any bad gaps. Better to fix them now, when it only means adjusting a few pieces. In order to create more organic spaces, it's important to become comfortable working off the grid. This doesn't mean that we're going to disregard snapping rules, however. 
Working off the grid means that we're going to be assembling components of the level independently of the main world grid, such as the ones we've just created, to join them. This allows us to create much more natural feeling spaces than are possible otherwise. The Nordic ruins we created previously are on the grid. The cave chamber we are building now will be off the grid. First, we make sure that snap to grid and snap to angle are turned off. Select all the pieces in the shell we've just created and rotate it approximately 45 degrees and move it until the walls of your room intersect with the cave transition piece we're also going to shift the cave shell down somewhat, so the player will enter the room higher than the floor. Just bring the room down along the Z-axis until the transition looks similar to that shown here. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Join us next week when we will learn to work with Snap to Reference and complete our cave. Until then, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>